Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up access tokens and refresh tokens in ASP.NET Core Web API, how they work, why they're important, and how to test them inside Swagger. Access tokens are short-lived and used for calling protected APIs, so even if someone steals one, the impact is limited. Refresh tokens last much longer and are kept securely on the server. When the access token expires, the client uses the refresh token to get a new one without logging in again. Together, they keep your API secure while giving users a smooth and seamless experience. Before we get started, make sure you've watched my video on implementing the basics of JWT authentication. If you haven't seen it yet, it's linked in the pinned comment below. Now let's create a new class inside the models folder called refresh token. In this class, we're going to define the following properties. Token stores the hashed version of the refresh token. User ID links the token to the identity user. Expires and created track the token's lifetime. Revoked lets us invalidate a token once it's used. And is expired and is active simply help us check if the token is still valid. Next, open application DB context, add the refresh token table to the context, and set up a few basic configurations inside on model creating. First, we configure a default value using new ID, which tells SQL to generate a new GUID automatically. Then, we limit the length of token and user ID to keep the schema clean and efficient. Next, let's open the Package Manager console and run the migrations to create the table. After that, open your SQL tool to confirm that the Refresh Tokens table has been created. Now let's create a class named AuthResult. This class helps us return both the access token and the refresh token along with their expiration times. It keeps our responses clean, organized, and easy for the client to work with. Next, open auth service and add a method called create access token async. This method is responsible for generating a new JWT access token. First, we load the JWT settings and create the signing key and credentials. Then, we build all the required claims, set the expiration time, and return the signed token along with its expiry. In short, this method creates the access token that the client will use for protected API calls. This create access token async method is used both when the user logs in and when we generate a new access token from a refresh token. And in the next video, I'll take this even further and show you how to integrate access and refresh tokens into a .NET MAUI app using JWT bearer authentication. For testing purposes, I'm changing the expiration time from 60 minutes down to just 2 minutes. 
This makes it easier to see the token expire quickly while we test the refresh flow. Let's create a class called Token Utils. This class generates secure refresh tokens and hashes them before storing them in the database. Generate token creates a random 64 byte token, returns the raw version for the client and the hashed version for the server. Hash token allows us to hash the raw token again when the client sends it back so we can compare it safely with the stored hash. In short, this class handles all the secure refresh token logic. Now let's open the auth controller and update the login action. First, we check the user's credentials. If the login is successful, we generate a new access token and a new refresh token. The access token is returned to the client, while the refresh token is stored securely in the database. To save it, make sure you inject application DB context into the controller. Once everything is saved, we return both tokens with their expiration times. Let's go ahead and create the refresh action. Next, create a class called Refresh Token Model with a Refresh Token property. This model will be used to receive the refresh token from the client when they request a new access token. This endpoint receives a refresh token from the client, hashes it, and looks it up in the database. If it exists and is still active, we revoke the old one, generate a new access token, and issue a new refresh token. This ensures each refresh token can only be used once. Finally, we return the new token so the client can continue making authorized requests.
Now open program.cs and add this setting to your token validation parameters. ASPI.NET allows a 5 minute clock skew by default, which can hide timing issues during testing. Setting it to zero makes token expiration checks exact. Perfect for our 2 minute access token demo. Now that everything is set up, let's run the app and go to slash swagger. First we call the login endpoint with a valid user. Then we copy the access token and use authorize so Swagger sends it automatically. Finally we call a protected endpoint like secure data. It looks like something in my code is causing an issue so I'm going to set a breakpoint to debug it. After stepping through the problem was inside create access token async. I missed the letter S in the configuration key. JWT settings versus JWT setting. Fixing that made the login work correctly. Let's try again. Everything looks good this time. Copy the access token, use authorize, and call the protected endpoint. Oh, I'm running into another error. Let's open create access token async and check again. The issue comes from how the IAT claim was set. Using to universal time gives us a string value, but JWT needs a numeric timestamp. The correct approach is tunix time seconds, so the IAT claim becomes numeric. That fixes the invalid token error. All right, everything is fixed now. Let's run it again. Log in, get your access token, and you should be able to access the API. Now let the access token expire, wait about 2 minutes. Then call the refresh endpoint with the refresh token you got from login. You'll receive a new access token and a new refresh token. Add the new access token into authorize and call the protected endpoint again you should be able to access the API. You can also open SQL and check the refresh tokens table. You'll see a new row created every time you log in or refresh the tokens. If you try to reuse an old refresh token, you'll get an error because we revoked it. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and I'll see you in the next video.